Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm checking out the Jawa 6 scale figure set by Sideshow. Let's see how it turned out. Okay, first up as always is the packaging. Uh, nothing extraordinary about it except this photography. Wow, it's pretty incredible. Sideshow never let go of this guy. He really knows his stuff. Hey, look at that. On the bottom, we've got a really snazzy barcode. Uh, the rest of the package, kind of standard fair design as dictated by Lucasfilm. They like that look. I like that look. Everybody, oh, look, another great photograph. This one shows the really awesome two ways that you can have those um, those uh, cowls, those uh, hoods over the Jawas. We'll get into that later, though. For now, let's get into what these disgusting creatures look like. Wow. I, they really did some awesome stuff after the prototyping. Uh, I like what they did with the um, with the fabric. It's really, really cool. It downscales nicely. Getting back to those hoods, I want to bring that up one more time before we move along. Sideshow was good enough to include some fairly well-detailed instructions. Uh, the photography on them, it's kind of small the way that they ran them, so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. But pay close attention to that because that'll be important to making your figure look great. There's a couple of really awesome options there. Looking at these little bits here, wow, they really brought the detail up to the next level on this stuff. It looks fantastic. I think that it's going to photograph really, really, really well. Below each Jawa, you've got a stand, a um, little tiny stand that goes under the bottom of the foot. I'll show you how to do that later on down the line. And on the back of the head, a handy dandy switch. Batteries are already installed so that you can turn on those lights. Look at that, nice and bright. Uh, those batteries are from China, folks, so you can count on them not lasting terribly long, but I think that we'll find that there are some suitable replacements available at your local hardware store. I recall seeing on that sheet that there are actually a, there's a, actually a listing of what batteries are necessary. If, you, if it's not on the sheet, then just do a search. Got a little bit of a droid collar, not a droid collar there, it's, uh, there is a droid collar on the back of the left hand Jawa's um, belt, but what I just had my fingers on there was a um, the little device he uses to add the droid collar to the droids, uh, the um, restraining bolt, the restraining bolt, that's it. Um, so anyway, that's got that little device, we'll show you how to use that later. All right, so this is going to take a little time because for a couple of reasons. I'm posing two figures here, and I'm posing two figures that are wearing robes. Uh, it's really tough to get down the exact positioning necessary on a figure body when it's concealed. It's like it's like posing in the dark. There's really it just ups the level of difficulty. Now looking at this body underneath, um, this is really cool. It's a downscaled body. It's a body that they adapted from I think the Lord of the Rings figures, the Hobbit figures that they either did or were going to do or something like that. They adapted those to be used with the Jawas and they worked really well. You've got a nice double articulated knee joint, so you're going to get a lot of depth out of those knees. Um, the feet are really, really tight. Those feet joints, the swivel there, they're really tight and ratcheted. So what you see me doing here is basically breaking them in a little bit. Getting my fingers as close together on those joints so as to exert the least amount of leverage and then just working them back and forth a few times. Now look at that hole in the bottom. That is, anybody who has had any action figure in history knows what that's for. That's gonna go into the stand, plug that stand in right there and you're gonna get all the support that you're going to need. Now I say that, if you go but if you go a little bit on the extreme side with your posing, then it may overbalance and tip. You'll just have to rotate that base around in such a way that it actually provides more support based on which direction that figure is starting to tip. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Now, in trying to determine which hands, or while I'm trying to determine which hands I'm going to use, I'm going to point out to you one of the really cool things that they've done here. And that's that they've provided the Jawas with these little bracelets with fur attached to them. That's to mimic the actual fur that was coming out of the uh, the bottom of the Jawas sleeves on the, in the film. Uh, it's a pretty solid way of making it happen. Uh, it's pretty unidirectional um, in that you don't have the fur going all the way around. I don't know if that's screen accurate or not. Or not. I'm going to assume that it is so until somebody tells me otherwise, but what you would do is you just make sure that that thing's on with the fur pointing towards the hand, and then you can rotate that so that it's concealing the wrist joint. It's a great way to conceal that wrist joint, which does become a little bit of a, a nuisance if you're anybody like me, and I get a little bit picky about joints. I've sold figures that I've actually ado adored because the joints were too obvious but they've really gone the extra mile to make sure that you have options for 
for concealing those joints, make sure that they're not so glaring, and I really appreciate that. The wrist pegs themselves are pretty tight when it comes to swiveling, and they fit nicely in the hands. The hands are decently pliable. I remember the, uh, the prototypes being a lot more pliable. I think they went to go with stiffness to keep uh, things from falling out. Um, the wrist pegs were a little bit too easy for me to pull out of the arms, um, so be careful with that. Uh, once you get them in there, they should stay. Just don't apply too much pressure to them and they won't pop out um, too much. What you're seeing me doing here is trying to basically fit a square peg into a round hole. Um, I wasn't really paying close attention to the different hands that they that they came with. Um, that little Jawa, there is a sm there is a left hand pistol grip that perfectly fits that blaster. I was having trouble fitting it to the right hand pistol grip because that pistol grip is meant to go with the big ion blaster that the taller Jawa carries at his hip. At any rate, what I decided to go with instead was to have the Jawa basically with an index finger pointing, a gesturing hand. Anybody who's seen A New Hope recognizes what this scene kind of represents. It's the smaller Jawa pointing out to the taller Jawa, hey look, there's a droid over there. In case anyone's wondering why I have the figure laying on the ground like this, it's simply because it just makes it easier for me to manipulate that little furry bracelet that I was talking about earlier and the hands at the same time. Um, the furry bracelet is actually an elastic strap, so you kind of have to work it to open it up enough to get it around the wrist. In order to do that, you kind of need both fingers. You can probably fake it um, or just cheat it a little bit once you get used to using like your thumb and your two and your first two fingers. And in fact, I actually did get pretty good at that by the end of this posing session. But for my for the sake of my peace of mind, I think it's just a lot easier to take your time with it and lay it down on the ground and just not have the added pressure of say gravity or any other forces taking you know exerting their will on that bracelet making it fall off whatever just um, just make it as simple as you can for yourself I am having a little bit of issues with the hands at this point um, mostly because I couldn't really figure out which hands go with what that's the thing about small hands is that uh, they have a tendency to look well a lot alike it's harder it's much harder when the scales about half the size of your typical six scale hand at least for me to really get a good idea of of what's um of which hand goes with what, uh, but I've got the um, the index the pointy finger going on already. Uh, now, as you see, I'm just going to go ahead and flipping up the Jawa skirts like I talked about earlier. It's kind of hard to tell what the legs are doing with the skirts uh, with the robes wrapped around the legs, so I'm just pulling that back and getting in there just to make sure that I have all the angles right to make sure the feet aren't doing anything funky that the hips aren't going the wrong direction. Um, I've had figures, Jedi, whatever, posed with their... It wasn't until much later that I realized that the leg was twisted like 90 degrees to one side and it just made the whole pose look awkward and I couldn't figure out what's going on. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't convince myself to just go ahead and, you know, pull up those robes and get a look at the legs. At any rate, for those of you who may be losing patience at this point and thinking, oh my god, he's taking so long with one Jawa, what's it going to be like with the other one? Well... Everything's based on a learning curve, as you'll find out. Um, so I've kind of figured out all the rules for the Jawa at this point, for the Jawa figure body, for the furry bracelets, for all the hands, everything. Um, and you've actually gotten to watch me do it live. Uh, if you ever watched the How to Be a Poser series, a lot of that's edited out. Um, that's for timeliness. That's just to so that we don't take up any more of your time than we have to do. But in this video, this is a full-on live posing session that you're watching here uh, with all the belt, with all the warts and everything. Do Jawas get warts? Does anybody know if that's canon? I actually don't. So I've kind of got a good rough pose going here. And I think that this is just about done. Um, I'll probably wind up tweaking it again between now and the photography session. Uh, and now it's time to get started on Jawa number two. The taller guy with the big blaster. And I think to make this guy look his coolest, I'm going to pull the blaster out of the holster. Now... Having said that, before I get into that part of the whole thing, I want to go ahead and futz with this uh, this hood and get it looking as good as I can. Right now, when it ships to you, you can see that it's kind of tied in a knot there at the back, and that's just not the way that it's supposed to be. Um, they're just basically supposed to cross at the front, underneath the underneath the neck, maybe if you want to go that low, right in front of the mouth area, 
and then let those two flaps fall in the back. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can take this hood off all the way and rotate the hood itself 180 degrees and you have a completely different look to the hood when you're done with it. If you go back in the video and look at the little um, the thumbnail that appears with the title treatment before the video actually begins, then you're gonna see the other way that those hoods can look. I, I've changed both those hoods around for that particular photo. You get a good close up of it there and just compare it to this and you can see how just how much of a difference that makes in the overall appearance of the Jawas robes. If you had more than two of these, if you wanted to go ahead and get four of them, that would be a great way to differentiate your Jawas from each other. Another thing I should probably point out, now that I've got the blaster out of its holster, it was in there really, really tight. Um, I just had to be really careful about how I pulled it out, that faux leather, or I'm not sure what material that they used to simulate the leather. It downscales nicely, it looks fantastic, but I don't think you want to put a whole lot of pressure onto it. You might wind up um, tearing it. Nobody wants that. That's just not a good outcome. You can see here that I went ahead and chose to put the ion blaster into the Jawa's hand before putting the hand into the wrist. Uh, the reason for that should be fairly obvious. I just don't want to, given the nature of these wrist pigs, I don't want to run the risk of frustrating myself by continuously knocking the hand out of the wrist every time that, I, that I'm trying to make an adjustment with the gun. So I just wanted to make sure that that was in the hand nice and tight before I move forward with that. Finally, I'm getting to the part where I'm going to put the gun hand into the wrist as soon as I get that little furry um, wrist bracelet, whatever, uh, where it's supposed to be. Now, I'm choosing to use as a support hand the hand that came already attached to the Jawa. Uh, it's nice and it's got a nice big round curve to it with a decent diameter so that it kind of goes right over the can of the, uh, of the blaster's barrel, that big wide can looking thing on the tip, um, on the tip, on the muzzle. So what... You see, you can see it just kind of nice. It just kind of wraps around ever so nicely. It doesn't actually grip it, but it just has a more relaxed appearance, which is kind of what I, the attitude that I wanted to express in the Jawa. He's not actually on the attack, not just yet. He's just at the ready, while his one assumes it's his commander, the shorter one, is uh, kind of giving him direction on uh, what's coming their way. Now that I've got that gun in place, time to check under those robes and make sure that the legs are where they're supposed to be um, and what position they're supposed to be in. Uh, just kind of get a good posture, even though it's hidden, again, even though it's hidden by the robes, it's, I can't say it enough, it's really crucial to get those legs in the right place. You might think that you're, you know, successfully cheating the, um, the process if you just kind of hide any mistakes in leg posing underneath some robes, but it's gonna come back and bite you in the butt. So just make sure those things are in place, those legs are in place before you move on. Now one of the last adjustments that I make here is just kind of trying to make sure that those bracelets with the fur on them don't look like they're bracelets with the fur on them. So pay a, li pay a little bit of attention to it. Just kind of pull the, uh, pull the sleeve up just a little bit and just have just enough of that fur coming out of there that it looks like he's a hairy bastard who's got a robe on over him. I mean, these aren't supposed to be tiny humans. These are supposed to be alien creatures of some sort. And one assumes, based on what we're seeing here, that they do have black fur, at the very least, on their forearms or the tops of their hands. Any of you who out there who have actually seen a Jawa and the buff, please feel free to reach out in the comments below and let me know what you know. There, I think what I've got going on with that hand and the inset image there is kind of nice and attractive. I've just kind of really gently spread the fur around it to just kind of cover the whole circumference. Now be careful when you're messing with it because I did pull out a few strands of that fur um, on a couple of occasions. Nothing terribly egregious, just enough to make me realize that if I'm not too careful that I can probably rip out whole patches of it and that just ain't cool. Alright, well the poses are pretty much dialed here. Uh, I'm going to um, really quick get these hoods down and turn on the lights. Uh, once again, just to illustrate in the inset, you just pull back the hood and find the switch there on the back and flip it. Um, I think that I can get good enough with these where I can throw them throw them on and off by reaching through the hood. Yeah, it's probably more accurate to say by reach by pushing through the fabric and just feeling where the switch is. Uh, but I don't know. There's a lot of texture going on back there. You may be able to do it. You may not ever figure out how. Uh, but once you get these lights turned on, that those Jawa lights add a lot. Those eye lights add a lot to the effect, and they really do 
bring another level of realism to these figures. Just look how cool that is. Um, not really happy with the, the Captain Jawas pose, with the short guy's pose. I'm going to tweak that, I guarantee it, before I go into photography. So yeah, overall impression so far is that it's pretty cool, man. You can do some great stuff with these things. Um, because of the unique nature of the bodies, um, they require a little bit of care and dedication. Um, just be patient with them. Um, but I'd say that, um, yeah, much much stronger in appearance than I, uh, than I could have anticipated. Love how they turned out. Jawas can be used for a lot of things in a collection. You can um, bring them to the table for comic relief or just use them to accentuate your Tatooine themed display, um, which is probably the direction I'm gonna go with it. I still have my eyes on a dewback or hope of getting a dewback at some point in time. But yeah, just kind of look at this. You can have them being cool and these guys can look pretty cool, like they're kind of gangster. Uh, you can interact with other figures, which by the way are sold separately. You cannot get an R5-D4 from Sideshow right now. Um, yeah, just look, they, you can tell great stories with these guys, and whether by themselves or by bringing in, in this case, one of the creature packs from uh, years ago that Sideshow did. Those are a couple of Womp Rats. Or talk about a couple frustrated Jawas trying to figure out what to do with a busted up R5-D4 in this case. And I think that's the greatest part of Sideshow's success with these Jawas, is your ability to do so many different things with them from the perspective of storytelling and attitude. Um, case in point, this next photo. Hope that's not too graphic for anybody. That's about it for the video. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the Jawas if you have them. Until next time, be good to your plastic. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under Product Info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.